We continue our story now with the subject of the bank. Working our way down the balance sheet, the last one to look at is cash and bank. And the question for cash and bank is, is the lovely question, bon voyage. Question bon voyage. And it works very well, this one, because it's a travel agent. And therefore, they have fairly complex um, bank and cash balances because they have foreign currency. So it works very nicely. So bon voyage. You are the partner in charge of the audit of Bon Voyage, a company which runs a travel agency business through a head office in London and 10 retail shops spread throughout the country, six of which have been opened during the year. A medium-term bank loan was negotiated to cover the additional working capital required for this expansion, summarised balance sheet extracts for the two years, and the comparatives are as follows. And you've got um, you know, current and comparative, and we work our way down. And the main thing that we're auditing is the current figure of 67,000 in cash, and the figure just above 37,600 in the bank. Those are the two main figures that we are auditing, so just over 100 grand. But if you drop down into the lower section of the balance sheet, you'll see that we have a bank loan of a figure of 60,000. And we're also going to audit that as well, because clearly that's you know, a bank transaction, a bank balance. Required, you are required to describe four matters which may be covered in a bank letter and explain why they, um, they are important to the auditor. It's only four marks, so it's going to be very, very brief on left and right. You probably guessed already because we've got, you know, four matters and the reason it's important, we're looking for a table as we always are when there's two requirements. So it's matters and reason. Um, there's all sorts of things in a, in a bank letter. A bank letter is sent by us, the auditor, to the bank, direct, and then it comes back from the bank to us, the auditor, direct. And it's a very long document with a covering letter from the client, allowing the bank to talk to us. And this, this long correspondence has got lots of questions in it. Um, it's around about... Depends on the particular you know, client that you're working on, but it's around about three or seven pages long of appendices and questions. Lots and lots and lots of questions. We only need four, so, well, we only need four. The top question, the number one question, is, um, it's a bit odd actually, you ask the bank to confirm the bank balances at the year end. Which is a little bit odd, because obviously you'll have the bank statements. But the thing is about the bank statements, is you take the bank statements, um, off the shelf at the client's place, don't you? So the bank statements, when you ask, you know, you go to the, um, the accountant to say, can I see the bank statements, please? He says, oh, yeah, yeah, and he pulls it off a shelf from behind him and gives it to you. So even though the bank statements are theoretically third party, you know, they've come off the shelf from behind the accountant, haven't they? So what we need to do is we need to get some really, really solid third party confirmation that the bank balances that they have on their bank statements really are what the bank felt was in the bank at the year end. So that's the number one question. And then there's just three others. So number one is balances. This is to support the bank statements. So you ask them to confirm what balances are in the bank and then you agree those balances that come from the bank directly to the bank statements that are in the file in the accountant's office. And then you just ask other things like overdraft facilities and so on. Overdraft facility. Let's use its full thing, its full name. Uh, this is to um, get a feel for the availability of short term finance.
three uh, bank loans. Uh, this is to support the liability figures in the FS. Uh, bank loans, this is to support the liability figures in the FS. And what the heck for a um, fourth one? A last one will have security. You know loans are normally secured often uh, with what's called a mortgage or a fixed uh, charge on land and buildings quite frequently. Well that mortgage, that security needs disclosure in the FS. Um, this requires disclosure. in the FS and we can keep our responses pretty short and pretty punchy because uh, for, for each of these it will be half and half so I think those answers are perfect as they stand. I'm moving to the remainder of the question which is very tempting to do AEIOU again isn't it? Uh, to outline the evidence required when carrying out the year-end audit, uh, the following balance sheet items is very slightly different to previous questions. Rather than describing the tests that we would do, the substantive tests on bank, we're going to describe the evidence required, but well, very, very similar. So we're just going to describe the different things that we would need in order to corroborate the bank and the bank loans. And then the cash, which is divided between floats, unbanked cash and travellers' checks. I think because we're going to do maybe three tests for the bank and then two tests for the bank loans, I think, to be quite honest with you, that we can come up with those ideas even without using a, a mnemonic. So I'm going to suggest we just go straight for it. So that's what I'm going to do. So B1 uh, Bank. Um, bank reconciliation, possibly the first one. Um, this is required so that it may be reperformed uh, you know a bank reconciliation starts at the top with the bank balance per the bank and then it reconciles down to the bank balance per the client so you've got bank balance per the client and bank balance per the bank and what are called timing differences in between well that bank balance per the bank will come from the bank statements so I guess that's another piece of evidence Uh, this is required to support the above reconciliation. And three... Um, I don't know, what, what do I fancy? This one just popped in my head. If you don't like it, then it's fine. Just come up with another idea. But I've just thought of this one and it seems to work for me. Cash flow forecast. This bank evidence is required to verify the going concern status. 
Cash flow forecast, I quite like it. Uh, this bank evidence is required to verify the going concern status. Uh, now the bank loan, two marks, I guess. One contract. This is required to verify the payment terms. And uh, two, uh, we've mentioned security, haven't we? So we don't want to mention that one again. Um, what else do we need as regards a bank loan? Um, the how about how about this one? The um, variable rate. Um, this is required on most loans as the rate of interest Uh, this is required on most uh, loans as the rate of interest is often variable. And therefore it might be one rate for six months and another rate for the other six months. Um, yeah, great. So that's that. Uh, on to part B, part two. Uh, floats, first of all. Floats are normally held by what's called an impressed system. Now, an impressed system is a system whereby you have a cash tin with, say, using the UK pound, um, a hundred pounds in the cash tin. And then when someone takes 20 pounds out, and goes down to Sainsbury's and buys some sandwiches. When they come back with the sandwiches, they also come back with a little invoice, and then they drop the invoice back into the tin. So there's still a hundred pounds in there. Actually, there's 80 pounds in cash, but there's another 20 pounds of invoice on top of it, giving you the float. So the reconciliation is the main thing you need is the float. This is required to verify the um, float system is operating. So the reconciliation is a piece of evidence. Two invoices. Uh, this is required to verify that the, uh, the payments from Petty Cash are authorised. Uh, this is required to verify that the payments from Petty Cash are authorised. 
So there you go. There's two things that you require as regards the floats. Uh, unbanked cash, uh, I guess, is the cash in the tills. Could also be travel, uh, not travel checks, uh, foreign currency as well. Uh, one. Um, Till roll reconciliation. Uh, this is to confirm that the cash in the till agrees to the um, uh, the till roll. This is to confirm that the cash in the till agrees to the till roll. Uh, two. <coughs> um, yeah, four X. The foreign exchange rate. is required to value a foreign cash. So being a travel agency we might, say we're a travel agency in the UK, we might have some euros in our safe but the value of those euros in pounds would depend upon the exchange rate. And then just one for this one here. What's that? Travellers checks. Do you know travellers checks come in books? And those books have a sequence. The main thing to check is the sequence. The sequence... of TCs is evidence none have been stolen. The sequence of TCs is evidence none have been stolen. And there we have it. So we finished the bank. We finished bank and cash.